Hello again, welcome to another episode of the Uranium Market Minute. Today is Tuesday, January 18th, and this is episode number 64. Thank you again for tuning in. My name is Justin Hewn. I'm your host and the founder and publisher of the Uranium Insider Pro Newsletter, the only investing newsletter that focuses solely on uranium and publishes on a regular monthly basis. Welcome again. We had a long weekend, a three-day weekend for the U.S. markets. The TSX was open yesterday, but volumes are pretty negligible. Pretty nasty day out there today. So let's uh, let's get right into it and talk about what's happening out there. Uh, spot price of uranium flat again. Saw a little bit of movement today, but not much. Just not a whole lot going on there. Still kind of waiting for uh, the flows to come back into sput in a meaningful way into the spot physical uranium trust and or traders to front run that move. Not much happening out there. Still very slow along with a weak broad market. Looks like a pretty nasty day overall. Um, I'm going to give two-day totals here because uh, of the holiday yesterday in the U.S. Um, so SPUT yesterday raised $2.8 million. They did not purchase any pounds. Um, year to date, they've purchased 2.6 million pounds of uranium and raised $117.5 million of capital year to date. That's in uh, just over two weeks since the beginning of the new year. Pretty, pretty phenomenal numbers, honestly, so far. Um, all eyes are now focused on whether SPUT will be included in the URA rebalance. I will get more into that in the mailbag section. Uh, they closed at a premium to NAV at 2.21% yesterday, though the weak market today has probably moved that down closer to trading directly right around their net asset value. So probably not much to speak of in terms of capital raised today, maybe a little bit in the morning that we'll have to see. <clears throat> Uh, the aggressive purchases since the new year started has worked their treasury down to 20.28.7 million in cash. Presently at a level we expect them to keep in cash reserve. Basically, they're going to need to raise more capital to buy more pounds, and they're not doing it in this environment. So we need the market to kind of shift a bit here. Um, since the 17th of August, they've acquired 25.6 million total pounds of uranium, raised 1.1 billion. Um, again, their, uh, their ATM allowance is up to 3.5 billion total. Turning to the uh, sector equity ETFs, uh, neither URA or URNM reported any change in outstanding shares. As we've been saying, this is really interesting. Despite the sector pullback, there hasn't really been uh, much redemptions in terms of shares. In fact, the ETFs are near their all-time highs in outstanding shares. So what does that mean? That means this market weakness is coming primarily from selling of individual stocks, primarily likely from retail, perhaps a bit of de-risking. Um, of some smaller institutions around a, a weaker broad market. Um, overall, either way, uh, the AUMs are down based on the action of these two ETFs. So no mandated buying on Friday um, or likely today. Combined AUMs have slipped slightly below 2 billion, 1.98 billion. And uh, th this AUM total is still over 550 million lower than their high point in November. That's uh, just about nine weeks ago. So just a pretty big pullback here overall in the Iranian markets. Turning to the trading action, Friday's session was pretty weak, but there was some dip buying coming in at the end, as I noted in Friday's market minute. That was obviously good to see. However, the sector is selling off pretty substantially today, inspired by a weak broad market, most likely. So let's go ahead and take a look at the charts. With about 30 minutes left, of trading in the day, URA is trading close to the low print of the day, 2221 here, down over 3% on the day. Volumes, not massive, not negligible, just looking like about average volumes. This is with a pretty nasty day in the SPX, uh, in the S&P 500. So it uh, looks like what we're seeing today, in my opinion, is most likely A, a weak broad market, B, um, URA selling in this rebalance, which I'll talk about a little bit more. Um, and C, spot remaining flat. So typically what we need for the uranium market to really move is at least a flat, if not rising, broad market. Uh, this is on a daily basis. Spot doing something and or flows coming into the ETFs. And we're not seeing any of those things happen today, which is why it's such a weak day across the sector. Sprott Physical Uranium Trust actually printing a, a hammer here. It seems like it's really been hammer time for this stock. Um, over the past couple of weeks, holding up very, very well, still likely probably the best risk reward play around. Will you see a 10X in this stock when the bull market rages? No, you will not. But what is the risk of the downside here? I, I would say it's quite minimal. Um, we could obviously see it traded a greater discount to NAV, and that could be some further downside. But as far as the spot price goes, we're seeing very little action in the spot market. 
with a relatively stable spot price. So where I think we're at or near a floor in the spot market here in terms of the spot price for uranium, which means we should see fluctuations in the uh, discount or premium to NAV. And I think what the market is, is signaling here is seeing that, uh, that SPUT has traded at a premium to NAV on and off for the past few weeks. They've purchased a lot of uranium in the first few weeks of the year. And the spot price has moved up about 3% since, um, since 2021's close. However, the last few sizable purchases have not really moved the spot price. Of course, that's not a concern. That's just having to do with some liquidity being in the spot market. As I've said multiple times, there's always producers selling into the spot market from primary production. Um, and so, uh, but I think that, you know, retail traders that are trying to jump on the latest thing and expect this to only go up in a straight line, perhaps get frustrated or discouraged when you see big purchases not moving the price. Let's take a look at Cameco just about down to the very low print of the day with 30 minutes left here. However, it is sitting above its rising 200-day moving average, holding up better than most in the space. Dennis and Mines is going to close well below the 200-day here, not looking pretty out there. All right, so let's get into the mailbag question because I think it will address some of what we're seeing here. So today's question, Justin, I'm hearing a lot about the URA ETF rebalancing. Can you tell me about its implications? All right, so... Twice a year, URA will rebalance, and um, that's in January slash February. It usually kind of trickles into the beginning of February sometimes, the actual selling, but the rebalance decision happens um, in January and has already happened for URA. However, they don't publish those decisions as far as what will be included, um, if any stocks will be excluded based on a drop in their market cap or liquidity, um, and the percentage weightings and the in the shares that will be needing to be sold in order or purchased to make that rebalance. So those numbers usually come out a little bit later, but the decision has already been made and we will find out shortly. However, the effects on the market um, we're feeling now, okay? So URA rebalances twice a year, January and uh, uh, July, August. So January, February, July, August, URNM rebalances four times a year. Their last rebalance was in line with their dividend, which wasn't really a dividend, it was a tax uh, uh, unrealized gains redistribution that happened at the end of December, along with the rebalance. So URA is, but that's, that's the big one in the sector. They only rebalance twice a year. So their rebalances typically have more effects on the market than URNMs do because they happen less frequently. So we are expecting, uh, the Sprott physical uranium trust to be included in URA. Now, when SPUT took over UPC, they changed the uh, they changed the actual legal entity from a fund to a trust. And under um, URA's previous prospectus, they were not allowed to incorporate trusts into their holdings. However, uh, they, they changed the, the structure of the ent entity, excuse me, they now, they've amended the language to include trusts, which would include SPUT. That happened recently. Um, over the past few weeks, that news actually came out. So we're expecting that they will be included. We expect that they will have uh, that inclusion will max out at a 10% allocation. We'll have a full 10% allocation. We're not sure yet. We suspect it'll be slightly less than that. But what does that mean? First of all, that's really good news in the long term. Okay. That's far, far more investment flows going into SPUT, which leads to physical purchases, which leads to uh, overall a rising spot price of uranium, which affects all of the underlying holdings. This is a fantastic catalyst long-term for the sector. We were hoping for this inclusion, um, even though in the short term, too, the downside is that they have to make space for that inclusion. So they were go they're going to have to sell down all of the other holdings to make room for the inclusion of SPUT. So that's what we're going to be feeling now, today, and likely over the next week and a half to two weeks. Okay. So looking at the charts, we're seeing some weakness. We're seeing a number of stocks get down towards their 200 day, drop below their 200 day moving average. Sentiment is really poor. Um, it's And knowing that we have this URA selling going on, it's possible that we see further weakness, okay? And it's, it's likely that we're going to see, well, it's guaranteed we're gonna see further selling coming from URA. However, not sure whether we'll see buying match that selling in the coming weeks. That probably has something to do with the broad market, probably has to do with whether or not some institutions are going to take advantage of this opportunity and seize that opportunity. 
and take some sizable positions to see some volume coming in. Either way, I'm not seeing bottoming patterns here in the charts. And I think that it's likely we'll see some weakness um, from this sell-off. Now, I do think that this URA rebalance is likely to at least, uh, is likely to be the short-term bottom for the sector. Now, does that mean that I think it's going to have a V recovery? No, I don't. I actually don't think that at all. However, I do think we are going to see some support considering the overall bullish fundamentals around and the sheer number of, um, let's say, intelligent players that are privy to this thesis and are watching from the sidelines. If I were an institutional buyer and I was seeing retail in a panic and I knew the URA selling was happening and I knew that Sprott was taking over URNM in, uh, in about a month from now, just about five weeks, okay? What are the gonna be effects of that? I don't know, but I think we can make some, uh, some interesting assumptions about that. And the big one, of course, is uh, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust uh, in their New York Stock Exchange listing, which should come in early Q3, in my estimation. Of course, it could come sooner, it could come later, but it's probably happening in Q3. We believe that the application has been filed. So with all of that said, when we have broad market jitters, when we have spot flat on a daily or possibly even weekly basis, currently when we have the ETF rebalancing, that's when you see days like this. So it's important to understand what's going on out there too, in order to gauge your own actions in the market. Um, we, of course, are, are long-term viewers of this market. We are long-term investors. Um, we are in for the long haul. We are still up substantially on our positions. And if you take our recommendations, um, especially for members who, when we have highlighted periods of um, periods to get more aggressive, let's say on the buy side, uh, this is now one of those periods that if you enter in tranches that the market will give you opportunities like this. So it's important to scale in as well as scaling out. So with all of that said, uh, it's very important to not use uh, leverage, to not trade with leverage um, and margin, especially. This sector already punches above its weight. So when it moves, it moves really hard. It moves really fast. There's no need to trade on leverage. Um, we always avoid short-term options. Um, if anything, we like to use leaps or option spreads, which have done very well for us in the past. So this is one of those markets where it's good to kind of zoom out. It's good to look at weekly charts. It's good to scale in. It's good to have a long-term investing thesis. And lastly, I would say that um, on a personal note, one thing that has influenced some of my worst trading decisions in the past has been over-investing using money that I needed, okay? So... This is one of those investments where you should be putting money in that you are okay with losing. And that's not because I'm expecting that you're going to lose it. Clearly, that is not what I'm expecting. It's that the pressure that you can impose upon yourself, if you're trading with money that you need in the short term, can really make a stressful situation and make very, um, very difficult trading decisions so if you feel the pressure to have to extract some or all of your funds by X date, then that really causes a lot of stress in terms of your holdings when markets fluctuate like this. We get, we've now seen a 30 to 40% drop from the November highs in uranium. That's a big drop. I know of previous episodes I've shared that we've seen um, in, the, in the last bull market, we saw, we saw multiple pullbacks around that range, three, four, five pullbacks that went from 30 to 50%. So this is not, um, you know, outside of historical averages in terms of, of corrections in an overall bullish trend. But it's important to keep that in mind and to keep that longer term outlook, to understand the catalysts that are coming in the short and medium term, to understand the overall outlook for the long term, and to make your decisions accordingly in the short term. So that's what we're doing. Um, we're obviously long-term holders. So this type of you know, situation currently is, is basically noise for holding long-term positions. It's not something that we really stress about. If we have capital to allocate, moments like this and likely in the next week or two are probably moments to be taken advantage of if you're on the buy side. And if you are fully allocated, just ignore it. Look, look at your weekly charts, zoom out. Don't look at the charts at all. Keep, keep the, uh, your eye on the prize in the long-term. Like I've mentioned previously, Short-term expectations are the enemy of long-term success. All right, um, let's hope we see a little bit of uh, uh, stabilization in the markets in the coming week. 
Um, I believe that we possibly will, although as I mentioned, the URA selling will have its impact on the market, at least in the short term. So keep that in mind and uh, uh, hang in there, guys. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.